hello people in this video we want to look at this uh, topic hcg h stands for uh, human chorionic gonadotrophin uh, for some reason h is always written as small whenever it is human they make it small human chorionic gonadotrophin it's a hormone so what do you understand by the name it is uh, in humans chorionic from the chorionic uh, means from the placenta gonadotropin what do you mean by gonadotropin something to do with um, the gonads right the sexual organs sexual parts so basically that is what it means human chorionic gonadotropin is a hormone actually it is made from the placenta you can say from the syncytiotrophoblast of the embryo so that is why you can find it especially in the pregnant females and this is the hormone that they use for detecting pregnancy so look at this um, how do you do this uh, hcg test basically you will have these type of card tests which will detect the hcg they would have had an antibody to this hcg on the plate and when you put the urine one drop it will bind to the hcg and it will give the line isn't it so basically uh, this is a immunological test for the diagnosis of pregnancy it will use what it will use hcg it will detect the antigen hcg how by having the antibody which is available commercially okay so you can either do a blood test or a urine test for detecting the antigen hcg what are you detecting the hcg so uh, if you are having beta hcg uh, test you can have immunological test like um, uh, agglutination inhibition test direct latex agglutination test uh, elisa etc right then you have um, sandwich elisa is it and then plain elisa they have written down here can you see it then you have the radio immuno assay this is uh, trying to work with the beta subunit so this is the radio immuno assay guys remember and the one on top is immuno assay without radio isotopes so card test that you are getting is actually <clears throat> the uh, immuno assay without a radio isotope basically you are trying to detect the uh, beta hcg uh, that is the, you are trying to detect hcg antigen by having the commercially available antibody to it okay so if two lines are there it's positive <clears throat> and if one is there it is negative okay we are here in this video to learn everything about hcg guys so we'll uh, look at everything about hcg so basically it's a protein and it has a molecular weight some chemistry written here we are not going into this but from where is the hcg made it is made by the placenta we told you it's a placental hormone so basically look at this the placenta makes a lot of hormones it's just not that it makes a hcg it makes a lot of other hormones and we told you that um, which part of the placenta it is the syncytiotrophoblast which makes this human chorionic gonadotropin it is a pituitary like hormone the table says so here you can see the structures so some people said it looks it is something like lh but uh, to me or to us it really looks very different isn't it okay so um, beta hcg values will be very less in a non pregnant person or a male okay uh, and uh, mainly what you should understand it is a pregnancy hormone so it is going to be produced by that is uh, by the placenta the syncytiotrophoblast right and um, this is the one that is blamed for the vomiting that happens in pregnancy um, excess beta hcg is the cause for the uh, vomiting in pregnancy and also hyperemesis gravidarum okay and what you should understand is uh, in a ectopic pregnancy that is a pregnancy which is growing in the wrong place kind of a thing there will be less beta hcg less hcg okay and um, in a molar pregnancy that is a hydatidy form mole a complete mole partial mole basically the fertilization has gone wrong and something is like uh, there is no viable fetus so that is when there is excess of uh, uh, beta uh, excess of uh, beta hcg so basically a rapid increasing uh, beta hcg a serum hcg can indicate to you that it is a molar pregnancy and once they uh, remove the uh, 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 you know the molar pregnancy etc they will monitor this uh, hcg levels they should be falling right then nowadays this uh, with ivf etc the beta hcg is given to the female as injection right so that she will ovulate and they can harvest the egg so that is another reason how beta hcg values can be high okay then um, if there is a germ cell tumor then also hcg can be high okay so mainly you what did you understand hcg coming from placenta the embryo uh, the embryo the placenta the syncytiotrophoblast is making hcg and uh, this is for us uh, a good news uh, mostly uh, 
if uh, the person wants to become pregnant then only it is good news right but if this uh, is a double line and pregnant it can also mean it's an ectopic pregnancy or it can be a molar pregnancy right so, or it could be uh, something else like uh, a tumor okay so uh, basically you should understand that hcg has so many other things now coming to a blood test for a non pregnant person this is how a uh, uh, blood test okay this is not a urine test we're telling you now about blood test so look at this uh, it is uh, it has been reported as 0.32 milli international units per ml actually this is my own blood report so non pregnant at the state of stage of uh, blood report and um, why was this done i was very sure i was not pregnant okay then uh, coming here normal pregnancy what will it be this is what is the lab report told for me okay this is uh, they are saying that it will keep increasing uh, so much so in uh, till 12 weeks of pregnancy see it has reached some 1 lakh milli international units so milli means i cancel three zeros so 100 100 international units at around 12 weeks okay so this is the level of uh, hcg in the blood okay not the urine urine not urine we are talking about the blood here now uh, where else we'll come to the functions don't worry but now look at the levels of hcg that uh, you have to know about okay uh, the level of hcg very important look at this diagram here very nice graph only look at the red line okay don't bother about anything else look at this uh, the days of pregnancy has been indicated here let's take a better color see focus only on the red okay um, so basically uh, this is days of pregnancy and here they have tell telling you the uh, hcg see it just goes like this um let me try to draw it the okay we have to focus on the red so we will also draw in red only the red is the hcg okay something like this they are saying so this is the way it progresses with the days of pregnancy see it is steeply increasing here isn't it it doubles every 2 days uh, initially then it is reaching this 100 uh, international unit kind of a thing and after that it is uh, falling stable and slight peak in 32 weeks they are saying okay this is what the textbook says so if there is doubling of your hcg level uh, then you can be sure that you are having a nice pregnancy now let us understand where exactly this hcg is coming from see um, the uh, secondary oocyte is released from the ovary right secondary oocyte is released from the um, uh, graafian follicle from the ovary now this graafian follicle uh, which released this uh, oocyte is going to be called as a corpus luteum okay so now now what happens this uh, oocyte is going to get fertilized here and once it gets fertilized it becomes a morula then a blastocyst and the blastocyst is going to implant here right now this uh, once uh, it has this um, this blastocyst it will have syncytotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast it's developing the placenta isn't it so this is the one that makes the beta the hcg so basically this hcg what its job is it's going to go and tell it's trying to tell the corpus luteum please stay, hold on hold on hold on i have implanted please wait and make some progesterone if this signal does not come the corpus luteum will degenerate and will not make the progesterone which is required to sustain the pregnancy so this hcg is very very important to make sure that the corpus luteum survives and the progesterone is made until the placenta can take over the corpus luteum anyways will um, uh, you know it will peak around the its peak life will be around 8 weeks and after that it will uh, degenerate so basically did you understand this part of it this is the blastocyst where here in the yellow they have shown the trophoblast that is going to be two layers syncytial trophoblast and the cytotrophoblast it's the syncytial trophoblast which they are saying makes the hcg you can see here the blastocyst is embedding into the endometrium and here it is having the syncytial trophoblast std the stb they wrote syncytial trophoblast and the, this is the one the syncytial trophoblast is the one that makes the hcg very important to know okay this hcg seems to have some beta subunit okay and that they have, they have marked that here and then some alpha subunit so that is why they keep saying beta hcg beta hcg is it uh, one more thing about the levels of hcg guys just look at this um, less uh, hcg can indicate an ectopic pregnancy or an abortion okay so spontaneous abortion they are saying can indicate a low uh, level of hcg okay then what are the functions of this hcg we already told you it is going to protect the uh, it's tell the corpus luteum to hold on right that is what its main job is that is the main job of hcg it is a stimulus for the secretion of progesterone from the corpus luteum so um the corpus luteum will stay on till around 8 uh, weeks right 8 to 10 weeks um, uh, till the placenta can take over okay 
This is the major biological function of HCG. What is the major, major biological function of HCG to preserve the corpus luteum, to make pro uh, progesterone, uh, then uh, uh, other things, other things. Now, let us look at the other things. Guess this everybody will tell some other things are also there. Okay, now, uh, corpus luteum, uh, after 10 weeks, it will go away. Then placenta will take over. Then still why HCG is more? Because HCG will stimulate the uh, ladic cells of the male fetus to produce testosterone in conjunction with the fetal pituitary gonadotropins. Basically, the male fetus to produce testosterone. That much only we will learn. Okay. <coughs> then, it makes the mother not reject the fetus. So, it will do immune suppression of the mother so that the mother will not reject fetus. Okay. Immune suppression. Then, stimulates the adrenal and the placental steroidogenesis. So, steroidogenesis we learn. So, it will stimulate both adrenal and placental steroidogenesis. Placental means what? From the placenta, steroids also comes in. Okay. Stimulates maternal thyroid. Maternal thyroid it will stimulate because of its thyrotropic activity. It promotes secretion of relaxin from corpus luteum. So, corpus luteum not only makes progesterone, it also is trying to make relaxin. Okay. So, what are the functions of HCG? Will you say now? Uh, HCG, first of all, it will uh, uh, tell the corpus luteum to hold on and make uh, progesterone and uh, in uh, relaxin, right? Okay. Then it tells the male fetus to uh, for helps him to make testosterone. Then it will tell the maternal uh, maternal thyroid it will uh, stimulate. Then it will tell the uh, what else? Steroidogenesis. It will do steroidogenesis. Then something. I think one more point is missing immunosuppressive makes the mother not reject the fetus very good okay then uh, corpus luteum it will be at its best at the eighth week okay that's what they are saying then um, regression will occur after some time okay that is the corpus luteum so what are they telling about this corpus luteum is so important okay now let us look at something very weird okay guys there is something called as uh, anti-fertility for anti-fertility there is something called as anti-hcg vaccine strange right okay let's not bother much about that we are looking at in this video we have tried to look at this uh, human chorionic gonadotropin hormone basically it is from the placenta that is the since he to for blast part of it so uh, uh, this is a part of the chorion right uh, since he to for blast so hence it is called as chorionic human chorionic gonadotropin hormone so basically you can understand here once the blastocyst implants here and uh, once the blastocyst is implanting then it has uh, the blastocyst outer layer is what? The trophoblast. The trophoblast will have two layers now. Syncytial trophoblast and cytotrophoblast. The syncytial trophoblast is the one that is going to make this uh, beta HCG. Okay, the HCG hormone, human chorionic gonadotropin hormone. So, from where is the HCG coming? It is coming from the syncytial trophoblast of the placenta. So, it's a placental hormone. What is the job of this uh, hormone that is coming, um, HCG? Basically, the HCG is going to tell this corpus luteum here, Set, uh, set. He's going to tell the corpus luteum, please don't degenerate. Hold on for uh, for some time and keep producing progesterone because I have implanted. Please sustain me till uh, the placenta takes over. So the corpus luteum is going to make progesterone and uh, relax him. Okay. So that is what is this uh, main function, the main important function of uh, HCG. Okay. So, who is making the HCG? The embryo, the placenta, the syncytial trophoblast is making the uh, HCG. So, basically, we have learned to use HCG very smartly to know whether the person is pregnant or not. So, how will you know whether the person is pregnant or not? Look at this pregnancy test uh, from internet. See, on it, it is written, uh, urine pregnancy test, agglutinating sera reagent for detecting detection of HCG. Okay. So, basically, they are going to do some agglutination of uh, uh, immunoassay okay immuno uh, test antibody antigen reaction they are doing so what exactly are they doing here they are going to uh, detect this antigen that is hcg by using a commercially available antibody the antibody they already have with them they will detect the um, uh, antigen that is in your urine okay so there are a lot of uh, tests of, to detect beta HCG. You have immunological tests that is agglutination inhibition test, la direct latex agglutination test, sandwich ELISA, etc. Which all you can put in card and you can do which just now you saw the photo. One line means not pregnant, two line means HCG is present. We are not going to say it means that it is uh, a pregnancy, it can be an ectopic, it can be a molar pregnancy, etc. 
right? Uh, but what it says is HCG values are high. Okay, uh, the antigen of H uh, antigen HCG has been detected. Now, radio immunoassay also uh, you can do. Uh, they have given details here. Now, then what did we see in this video? We saw about um, uh, what HCG is all its chemistry and all you saw. And it is coming from the placenta. Placenta makes so many hormones and one of them sitting here, pituitary-like hormone is the, the human chorionic gonadotropin. It is coming from the sensi show trophoblast. Okay. Other things you should know is human placental lactogen. It also helps in maintaining the corpus luteum by the way. Right. And the corpus luteum also makes a relaxin. Right. So relaxin they have written here. It is made by corpus luteum, decidua, placenta. All of these are making relaxin. Okay. Now, this is the structure. It has alpha subunit and beta subunit. You can see here alpha subunit, beta subunit. Okay. Then coming to uh, HCG. HCG is very less in a non-pregnant female or male, uh, like 0.2 or something. That's all. Uh, it is uh, mainly a, a hormone in pregnancy that you can detect. It is also blamed for all the vomiting, hyperemesis, gravidarium, etc. It is less in the cases of an ectopic pregnancy, that is a pregnancy growing in the wrong place or, or in a spontaneous abortion, the uh, level of B, uh, the HCG can be less. It is excess in molar pregnancy. You should be very careful to monitor the HCG levels when you are treating a molar pregnancy patient. Molar pregnancy means that uh, two sperms uh, fertilizing uh, sub, uh, the same ovum, etc. or the ovum having no chromosomes at all. Basically something that is not at all viable. Then coming to um, uh, uh, HCG, it is also used in infertility treatment uh, for ovulation, for harvesting. Okay, Then uh, HCG can also be present if the person is having some kind of a tumor, germ cell tumor. Okay. Now this is a blood test of a non-pregnant female. This is not a urine test I am trying to tell you. It is a blood test of a, uh, a non-pregnant female. You can see the values around 3.3. Okay, And here it is showing you the uh, levels of um, uh, HCG that should be there in the blood uh, corresponding to the weeks of gestation. Okay, So you can see it begins around 5 milli international units, milli, it begins with 5 milli international units and it can reach up to 100 international units. Okay, uh, So the you can see here the graph, uh, it is kind of steep rise, the red, red color one guys. So there is a steep rise uh, in the beginning, it doubles almost every uh, day or every two days and then around 100 it reached and then uh, falling stable kind of a thing that peaks at around 32 weeks they have said. Then um, what else? Um, it, you can correspond it to the gestation, uh, gestational age, okay, the value. Then what are the functions we have already told you? It is going to uh, tell the corpus luteum to please stay on and trick, uh, produce progesterone and uh, relaxin. It, uh, what other job does HCG have that it is going to be there all throughout the pregnancy? Uh, it is going to uh, tell the uh, ladic cells of the male fetus to produce testosterone. So all about steroidogenesis, even testosterone is like a steroid only, right? And it is immunosuppressive. It is going to tell the mother, please don't reject the fetus thinking that it is some uh, foreign object, right? Then it uh, simulates the maternal thyroid uh, um, and it oh, that's it, okay? That's it. You have to tell about these functions of HCG. Corpus luteum basically because of being told by the HCG stay, corpus luteum cannot leave, it will stay and it will work till around uh, 10 weeks is it, uh, maximum function at 8 week or uh, after that it will stay on till the placenta can take over and make everything that the baby wants. And that is the progesterone and the relaxin. In cases of anti-fertility, they have developed something called as an anti-HCG vaccine for anti-fertility, okay, that is something that you don't have to bother about much. Now, this is human chorionic gonadotropin hormone video. We will meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.